but it's mad gangs, but only one got control. Whatever they roll. From North Pole to South Pole, ice cold with a vice hole on all crime. They're getting paid even if the shit is small time. All your dimes will get took. Then watch them slang them things, cause they nothing but a gang of crooks. Things look like they'll be here for a while. Mommy and daddy better fear for their child, cause they style is not just making the fast chickens. They also into murder and kickings. Extortion and kidnap for kids that's black. Handsome ransom might just get you your kid back. But either way, they're gonna make loot. If they keep the kid, he's gonna do a bit as a prostitute. Home and free for the G-A-N-G. From 6 to 66, they con is catching fix. Just sticks in your mind. Make a nigga wanna go out and fight crime. I write rhymes as an answer to their gang signs. So when they wanna jack your car, you can sing mines. Brand Nubian, an American hip-hop group active since 1989, featuring MCs Lord Jamar, Sadat X, and Grand Puba. Salute to DJ Alamo, Sincere, and rest in peace DJ Stud Doogie. Throughout the 90s, hip-hop was doing a lot of transitioning. From fashion to dance, appearance, and a lot of different styles were brought to the table, with every artist competing to see who could bring something new even producers began using software and digital effects to edit the audio and sample music, creating their own lane to thrive in. Hip-hop was becoming cool, more socially conscious, and positioning itself to overthrow the dominant country music in annual sales and usher in an entirely new, more shiny, harder-than-ever 2000s. In the 90s, urban artists almost all still had elements of call for self-awareness, pro-black teachings, and connecting to our roots as the source of creation and everything true between the gods and the earths. The socially conscious era where artists spoke about politics and social issues affecting the world. It was in its own way militant, but it was colorful fun, allowed, and very experimental at the same time, which is why it's often referred to as a golden era of the genre, and one group that had the chance to not only survive all the transitions of the decade, but flourish as one of the best during that time period, was Brand Nubian. They had the ultra-charismatic and versatile Grand Puba, who many claim was comparable to an artist like Drake in today's era in that he was a man early in his career that opportunity followed in rap music. He had songs with a young Mary J. Blige rapping of all things in a time mixing hip-hop and R&B was not the it thing to do. With opportunity came a lot of squandering on Puba's part. Allegedly, he'd have entire big budget video shoots paid for and ready for his presence and he would just not show up. With Puba, you had to love the good and the bad. Sadat X was clever with his rhymes and had a unique vocal tone that kept his verses interesting as the more even-keeled member of the group. And lastly, of the MCs, there was Lord Jamar, probably the most recognizable today that was the opinionated free speaker, highly anti-yes man in all ways. Some even say it was because of his untimely opinions Brand Nubian didn't last. Short-lived would be an understatement. They'd break up after just one album, their classic debut One For All. An album that achieved five mics in the source, kinda relatable back then to getting a Grammy nowadays. Only 45 albums have ever gotten five mics in the source and only 15 did it on initial release instead of later on being given more credit. One For All was one of them. Brand Nubian had the chance to lead the wave of conscious rap and ascend as high as they wanted with everyone involved, timing and opportunity, but for these reasons, as far as potential and expectations, they missed that mark. Salute to Terry Rux for this request. Let's talk about it. It's your boy JC Stunner Growth Music. Let's get it, man. This video is sponsored by Loops for Producers, the number one site to get sounds for your production. Simply click the genre and product that catches your eye. On the product page, listen to the demos and choose the sound option you want to purchase. After purchase, you will receive the digital download to the email you provided. Unzip the file and drag and drop the sounds into your DAW. Let the creative juices flow. 
Loops for Producers, the number one site for sounds. Take a minute to like, subscribe, and comment on who I should do next. Brand Nubian interestingly came together in 1989 when Grand Puba, who was originally a part of the 1984 group Masters of Ceremony, was looking for a change. Sales weren't as expected and the Masters disbanded. Lord Jamar and Sadat or Derek X were doing their own thing solo until Puba approached Jamar about forming a group, telling him he had offers on the table to sign him but he felt it made more sense to join the group trend becoming popular. Jamar suggested they include Sadat and they began shopping themselves without a name or music to labels. Elektra was one of them. They held a meeting with the label without music or a name, but off the strength of Pooba's success in the industry, they were allowed to go record a demo basically and come back to make the deal. They felt their name should reflect their brand new approach to hip-hop deriving from their 5% nation teachings. Later the deal was done and in 1989 Brand Nubian was introduced to the world. They released their debut album that year that went gold and was at the time heralded as one of the best albums out. Five mics and a hip-hop classic. Stunt number one, Grand Poobah going solo. With success comes truth. It shows you who you are as an individual in that whatever your intentions were before success will illuminate when you no longer have to hold back the things you desire or want to say. People related to being free because essentially that's all freedom is. Able to do as you please because you've proven you have what it takes for your way to work. When Brand Nubian became successful on their first try as far as critical response to their debut album, more exposure and decent sales, truthful intentions began to show and internal quarrels began, usually because Pooba's tardiness to shows and wanting to move contrast to the group. For Grand Pooba, his intentions, I believe, was always to become a solo artist. Did he use the group trend to springboard or reinvent himself? Likely and very genius. Same with Jay-Z. He knew where he was headed but in my opinion also knew Rockefeller couldn't last forever for him to reach his ultimate goal, solo success. Pooba strikes me as the same way. When he left Brand Nubian it took away the star power the obvious lead MC brought and some of the group's charisma and easy to digest lyrics and sounds he had. Because remember, he was a master of ceremony. One thing he was trained and may have even been natural to him was controlling the atmosphere and using his gift of gab to breed entertainment. When he left with DJ Alamo as well, Lord Jamar and Sadat X's music became heavily militant and lacked some of the easygoing, crossover appeal having lyrics and songs only Pooba could bring. This hurt Nubian, aka stunted their growth, but they were far from finished just yet. Stunt number two, parts were not greater than the sum. When Pooba left and went solo, things became an unspoken competition. In 92, Brand Nubian brought on DJ Sincere and in 93, released their first album without Grand Pooba, who was off having solo success and being innovative as one of the first to include R&B into rap records, seen with What's the 411 with a young Mary J. Blige and his solo single Check It Out. It's said that that's around the time Puffy began biting Pooba's MO and personal swagger. His 92 solo album peaked at 28 on Billboard behind his singles Check It Out and 360. In 93, Jamar, Sadat X and Brand Nubian came with In God We Trust that produced one of their popular hits, Punk's Jump Up To Get Beat Down, that peaked at number 77 on Billboard, criticized later for its homophobic lyrics. In 94, they returned with another album, completely produced by Lord Jamar, accepts the dots all of that, and received mixed reviews. Like their first without Pooba, this album too didn't meet the mark in sales, reception, or producing charting singles. In 95, Pooba releases another album much the same. 
good enough to receive oohs and ahs here and there, but nothing like the sum of what they each brought when they were together. Brand Nubian was too militant and rough around the edges as far as charisma and mainstream appeal, and alone, Pooba was ruining his own career by again his tardiness, like not showing up to video shoots with the entire label present to roll out his album, causing the label to shut down promotion and his album not to sell as expected. Some even called him lazy in those times. They both needed each other and it stunted their growth once again not understanding that sooner. Stunt number three, on again, off again. In 1997, Pooba would return to the group and in 1998 release Don't Let It Get To Your Head, their lead single and my personal favorite brand Nubian song off their first album Back Together that became their highest charting song to date, peaking at 54 on Billboard. The album foundation showed mostly their growth production wise, including top producers of that era that helped evolve Brand Nubian's sound, seeing as the 2000s shinier era was coming, but it still didn't meet the mark outside the single, and once again the group disbands. This time all to focus on their own solo careers. Six years later in 2004, they'd come together again for an album, and three years later in 2007, but the inconsistency showed as the music didn't produce hit singles or had much impact on the game in those times, as by then, conscious hip-hop had all but died out to the flashier, more braggadocious new era rappers. Brand Nubian was now a thing of the past. Their time to reach their ultimate potential had missed them in the 90s. All in all, Brand Nubian was important to hip-hop in that they helped maintain the house constructed in the 90s, and even Puff saw enough in Pooba to take inspiration from his style and his creativity in music. Did they become the group or artist they could've? Not quite, but still a memorable hip-hop group. Salute, much respect, but for these reasons, their growth was stunned. It's your boy JC Stunner Growth Music, and I'm out.